Today on the channel from McFarland Toys, we got a deluxe version. We've got Overkill. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Spawn McFarlane Toys unboxing and review, and today we've got the deluxe one, we've got Overkill, but remember for all your Spawn figures and a whole lot more, hit up Entertainment Earth, yes, Entertainment Earth, link in the description below. So Overkill is here today, now we've had a few deluxe figures in the newly formed Spawn line, whatever we want to call it. The rebirth of Spawn via McFarlane Toys. Of course, we've had Violator. Of course, we've had Cygor. Now we have Overkill, and of course, we'll compare those later in the video. But the first thing we got to do is we got to take a look at the packaging. We got to talk about it. We got to unbox it. We got to talk about it. We got to see where it goes from there. And of course, Overkill, no stranger to you 90s kids like myself that were collecting Spawn toys, reading Spawn comics. We all knew about Overkill, but a lot of us called him Overkill back in the time because we were all such big Motorhead fans, and Overkill, one of their staple songs, of course. But it is technically Overkill, but you do see a lot of retailers like Amazon, for example, listing this as Overkill and not Overkill. Hopefully they've changed that. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. I haven't looked lately. Uh, but there's always some confusion with his name, of course. But let's take a look at the packaging on this one first. Very similar box to the Cygor and Violator like we've seen in the past. The big deluxe package. Big window box. You can see everything going on there. Spawn logo in green looks really good. Then, of course, you got Overkill down below. I'm sure there's going to be a bloody edition variant down the line. There always is. Uh, I'm not picking those bloody ones up, but I'm sure they'll have one with Overkill eventually. On the side, you got some cartoon artwork there. Looks really good from the uh, comic book. The same thing on the back, more of that. But no blurb, no nothing, no explanation, nothing going on there. But you do get a little bit of Spawn, and of course we'll compare them to Spawn later on in the video as well. Big window box at the top, warnings UPCs down below. So without further ado, let's get them out of the package. Let's see what's going on here. We got 22 points of articulation on this bad boy. There's no card, there's no nothing, there's no explanation. We do got that stand back there, but how cool is that background, that green kind of flame going on? That looks awesome. Uh, I'll dig out this stand later on. See you later. I got enough of those stands we can use temporarily. And there's one right here. So we'll use this one when the time comes. And it's always weird having these big figures on the stand because the, like, the foot is the same size as the stand. It's always strange. Uh, but there he is. There's Overkill in the package in the old plastic prison. Whoo, getting high on your own supply. I mean, this, oh my gosh, it hurts your eyes. Uh, this does have a very strong paint order. This is uh, really feeling this one. You could smell it when you got him out of the package. But boy, he smells brand new. That's some brand new plastic going on right there. Let's cut him out of the plastic prison. Get the big kind of twist tie around his waist. All right, like so. It's somewhere between a, a zip tie and plastic tie. Off to the side, see you later. Oh, we got more on his legs. Of course we do. Why, why wouldn't we just load him up with twist ties? Uh, very interesting McFarlane. No talk of McFarlane of what they're doing for packaging changes or anything like that. Uh, we know it's coming to everybody eventually. McFarlane will probably be the last one to have that happen to. Well, we got some tape inside holding him on too. Tape right there. I think we got it. I think we got it all. There he is. Pulling him out of the pack. There it is. Nothing. See you later. Now, the first thing I noticed with this thing is, now, we've had a lot of giant figures from McFarlane. Recently, I think the last thing we unboxed on the channel was the Clayface. There was the giant DC McFarlane Clayface toy. Uh, we unboxed that one. Uh, and I wasn't a huge, huge fan of that Clayface, if you remember. It looks really good, but as far as the figure, very light. Very light. It feels like it'd be a heavy figure, but it's light. It's not like that Violator figure that's just a solid chunk of plastic. Uh, Clayface is very hollow inside, and I get it, saves money, all that kind of stuff. I get a little of that feeling here with Overkill. He is not as heavy as you think he would be. He is fairly light, and you can feel he feels very hollow inside. These legs, big meaty legs, but very hollow on the inside, uh, so there is that going for him. The other thing here is no weapons, nothing of any kind. Uh, I go way back to the first Overkill figure, way back in Spawn series. Was the series one of the figures? There was Tremor, there was Overkill. 
uh, Clown, Violator, of course, Spawn, Medieval Spawn. I mean, those are like the first two sets there, and about a million repaints of all of them. Uh, but Overkill was one of the gimmicky figures. I remember, I, I believe his hand extended out or shot out, something like that. We don't have any of that going on here. Uh, we don't have any of those fun little projectile buttons or any extension. Uh, cybernetic robot, a face only a mother could love. Uh, you know, I heard his mom thought he was so ugly he had to feed him with a slingshot. That's what she did uh, back in the day. So just an interesting uh, robot creature. And it would be nice on the packaging if we had some explanation of what this guy is. Because a lot of people buying him can't remember. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. It's been so long since I've read him in the Spawn comics. I remember thinking he was a bad guy, but isn't he like kind of a good guy or a tweener? Some guy that floats back and forth. Uh, I always assumed he was really evil, but I think he has like a heart of gold somewhere in there. Maybe I'm wrong. Somebody can correct me. I'll probably look it up after the video. Uh, but I was feeling like he was, uh, experiments were done on him and stuff, and that was kind of the way it went with him. But man, a hollow feeling figure. This isn't as big as I thought. And we know costs are going up, things like that. We're doing a little business hat talk here. McFarlane hasn't taken a price increase. McFarlane instead, in my estimation and what I see with my own eyes and what I feel, he's done the old bag of trips, chips trick, as it's said. Uh, you have the same size of bag, but you take a chip out. And he's kind of done that. I think he's uh, made some hollower parts, making them you know not as hefty as that violator, for example. And now I'm not taking a price increase, but I'm using less plastic, so he is having money savings. But I feel by the fall, by the end of the year, my gut just tells me we'll see a couple of dollar price increase on a lot of McFarlane stuff. Uh, it just has to happen. I just don't see any way around that. But Overkill doesn't come with any weapons, no accessories, no card, no explanation, nothing. Just a big cybernetic robot type character going on here. Uh, but big, got a little armor plate right here on the uh, right arm. Got one on the left, and it's got the little Batman-like uh, little spear dagger things coming out like Batman always has. Got a little shoulder gauntlet up here. This thing moves all over the place because it can move out of the way of the arm. Uh, it doesn't affect any of the articulation or anything like that. Uh, he does have waist articulation. The head moves a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, it goes up all the way, goes down, side to side. You can spin it all the way around if you are so inclined. Elbows, very tight ratchet joints on him, very tight. Uh, single jointed on these big figures, not a ton of articulation, but it does move. Hands move as well, side to side, back and forth. No extra hands, no accessories, no nothing here. Uh, very hollow feeling legs, that's where the savings really happen and in the midsection, very, very hollow. He does have this yellow belt going on and once again it's a very Cygor diaper type thing, but it's not as bad as we saw with Cygor. Uh, it works in this instance, gives you a little bit more flexibility up through the crotch and through the legs. You get the single knee joint, you get the ankles, very tight ratchet ankles, but you got tons. You really don't need a stand for a guy like this. He's got such big feet, there's really no need to it. Tons of sculpting throughout the legs and the arms, very robotic uh, going on there. And then you get to the chest, which is a big old beat up cavity, um, human skin with uh, dings and scars and just beat up. You can tell this guy has been experimented on for sure. His face, once again, a face only a mother could love. Uh, kind of got ripped away flesh. You got some uh, brain parts kind of showing with some metal parts mixed in. You got a little metal in the spine and around the side. Uh, definitely a cybernetic monster is what he looks like uh, for sure. His head, he's got that red eye going on, the cybernetic eye. Almost like a death clock in um, uh, Marvel, of course, Marvel Legends. I don't know, though. It, it is cool. It is a nice big figure, but boy, there's not a lot to it. It is just kind of, it is what it is, really. Uh, there's no accessories, like I said. There's nothing to go along with him. He's just a big, menacing guy that'll stand on your shelf. I have to assume Tremor might be one of the other deluxe ones we might get in the future, hopefully. A few longtime viewers of Spawn or collectors of Spawn toys back in the day. We know all the heavy hitters back, uh, say when, you know, way back in the mid-90s. But I don't know, I don't know. Quality-wise, this kind of puts it up there with the clay face for me. A little bit hollow, not a lot going on there. I guess I was expecting a little bit more. Not bad. This might be one of those ones you got to really get a deal on. Wait for a Target sale, uh, wait for a sale somewhere, and maybe capitalize on that instead of rushing out and spending your $40 for this one, as there's really not a lot to it, at least from where I sit and from what I'm looking for. Of course, I do have spawn here, and I like to use this as my spawn. I do have that throne spawn on the way. I think I might have that in the next week or so. Uh, I have that one. Maybe that'll switch up my spawn, but I have been using this Mortal Kombat spawn. I really do like this one. Scale-wise, it works perfectly. looks really good. Is this a big? He's a big cybernetic robot. He's got to be here like this. 
Then, of course, you get Cygor. Now, Cygor feels heavy. He feels like a heavy chunk of plastic, uh, unlike this guy. Uh, but he's crouched down and stuff. Cygor, as we know, we did the review on the channel. Check it out if you missed it. We just really didn't like the diaper piece on him. That was the worst part of Cygor. Uh, but besides that, he looks okay, I thought. Uh, and then we're going to get the granddaddy of them all, the one that started all the rage of Spawn figures in this new incarnations, uh, a fabulous one. And one of my favorite figures of last year is the Violator. I mean, you compare these two, you hold these two side by side. I mean, this is heavy. This feels like it's 20 pounds. This feels like it's two pounds. Uh, I know I'm a, a little extremes on both ends there, but uh, definitely feels like there's been some quality changes. There's been some quality changes with the plastic, and that goes back to the little business talk I had earlier. Uh, but still, if you love Spawn, if you collected Spawn back in the heyday, I read Spawn through like the first 75 issues or something like that. Then I tailed off. But I did watch the movie. I did watch the HBO cartoon. Uh, I did collect a lot of the toys deep, deep into the toys. I was collecting toys after I stopped reading the comics. So uh, it definitely hits me in the nostalgia factor of the mid-90s comic book surge, I guess, I was under. And it uh, really does really is cool, I guess, after these things, to get something like this so many years later and just really uh, jog your old nostalgic memories. I can even see my dad. He used to come along with the comics shop. Uh, I think Wednesday was new comic book day back in the day. We were collecting the Spawn figures, and I'm pretty sure uh, my dad might be even dabbling in a little overkill. We'll see what happens uh, in the future. But all in all, a mixed bag. I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world. It's not the absolute worst thing in the world. It really is truly somewhere in the middle. If you're a huge Spawn person, this could be for you. Uh, I guess it just really is choose your own spawn adventure. But what say you guys? You picking this up? You passing on it? You waiting for a deal? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on Overt Kill. Don't call him Overkill now. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And of course, while you're here, give this video the old thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. Follow along on Patreon for this video and a lot of other videos much, much earlier. Uh, giveaways over there and exclusive content over there. And I'd love to have you a part of the Patreon fun. If you want to reach out to me and follow along, hit me up on Twitter at SirPaul64. Instagram, the underscore Kyle, underscore Peterson, and ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. So for Overkill, I am Kyle. See you guys all real soon.